Hey guys, it's Christopher, and uh, something very exciting happened today in the world of Bradbury. Um, a little hoarse at the moment. Uh, forgive me for that, and it's noisy in here. Got all sorts of noises going on. I, I was mowing the lawn, and uh, my allergies kind of made my voice hoarse, but I didn't want to wait on this, and I don't want to bury the lead. Um, this is about the illustrations by Val Merrick that uh, are in the um, uh, Ray Bradbury Live Forever stage play along with my visual effects in the backdrops for Bill Obush Jr. And uh, anyway, this is the Halloween tree and it, the dogs are just going to make all sorts of noise, aren't they? The dog just grabbed the noisiest, excuse me, excuse me, Winston, Winston. I know you were in my short film, Don't Become a Prima Donna. Okay. So, aw. Okay, you're cute. It's true. It's true. So, but try and be a little quieter, okay? I don't want to bury the lead on this. So, um, I got this today in the mail from Val Merrick. <clears throat> and if you've seen the stage play uh, Ray Bradbury Live Forever, uh, or have seen my behind the scenes on it, you know that Val created illustrations. He illustrated the poster for the play and illustrations uh, to go along with um, some visual effects in the play as well. And that included, uh, like I said, these, these illustrations, which were meant to be cave illustrations. Uh, so the idea is the play starts in a cave and uh, that cave is uh, like a like the dawn of man type thing, but it's full of cave paintings. But when you look closer at them, they are depictations of, uh, did I say that right? Of Ray Bradbury's stories. So uh, first of all, let me talk about this, of Dust and Blood, a story of the fight at the greasy grass. Uh, Val did this with uh, a writer named Jim Barry and it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, here is some of Val's portrait work, along with uh, a hand-drawn, custom hand drawing on this page, which I, my only regret is that I don't want to take it out of the book, but I do want to frame it. Uh, but no, we'll leave it in the book. And it is signed by both uh, Jim and himself, and it is, just gorgeous. I mean, this, I'm not gonna spoil it all, but oh, it is so good. I mean, I, just one of these beautifully illustrated books. Man, I'm getting really hoarse, uh, no pun intended. So anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to reading this, and I'm very, very thrilled to be getting that in the mail, but Val included the original artwork that we used in the play and I'm just over the moon uh, to be the owner of this is it's quite an honor so I thought I would just share with you uh, what they are so here is the Halloween tree and uh, if you're familiar with Bradbury you know that the Halloween tree was kind of Bradbury's answer to it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown uh, he says that he and his family were very disappointed that the great pumpkin didn't show up and so he wanted to create a Halloween story where there was actual magic, actual uh, kind of love of Halloween. And uh, anyway, so the Halloween tree is uh, got a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns hanging from it, which I just thought was a really cool image. It was also made into an animated cartoon by Chuck Jones, narrated, uh, or was it narrated, or was it the voice talent of, anyway, Leonard Nimoy. <clears throat> We have some uh, astronauts and their rockets to Mars, which I thought were really cool. This really kind of embodies the the kind of science fiction aesthetic of the 1950s when Ray Bradbury was very popular. It's also kind of remind me of the uh, original rockets in the rocket ship ride at Disneyland. Here is the uh, Homecoming Mansion. If you're familiar with the story Homecoming or the Elliott family or the novel, uh, from the Dust Returns. This is the haunted 
Adam's family style mansion where a family of monsters, vampires, witches, ghouls live with their human son. Adopted, of course. A Martian. I love that there are six fingers on the hands. I, Val really nailed this K painting aesthetic. And I gotta say, you know, you think K paintings, childish drawings. Uh, I tried to do them myself and I could not nail it. It looked looked like kids' drawings. Val's illustrations, he just nailed that cave painting look. There is a, a style to it, and a, you know, those, those cave painters were pretty good. The Illustrated Man, uh, I like, it's kind of cool. It's like he's doing a little um, tribal dance. It's pretty cool. Uh, the Illustrated Man, of course, being uh, a character whose tattoos at night would come to life and tell stories and that was how he introduced stories in his book, The Illustrated Man. The Velt. The Velt is a story that I think is kind of relevant now. It is a, kind of a precursor to Star Trek's holodeck, but it's about uh, parents who kind of leave the raising of their kids to electronic devices, and the kids and the electronic devices turn on them. It's kind of it's the kids are, have a, a nursery with TV screens all around it that if you walk in, it makes you feel like you're in the African veldt. There are lions feeding on elk or antelope or gazelles, whatever, whatever lions feed on. I don't know. What do I look like? I'm not an expert in these things. Martians. Uh, I just love these, again, these kind of cave painting aesthetic silhouetted Martians. This this is this image is so evocative. Um, it's so minimalistic, but it tells so much story in it. And I always tell, this is something I'm gonna talk about in later videos. Um, storytelling is subtraction. People always wanna tell their stories and they add and add and add because they don't think that the audience is going to get it or they wanna make sure the audience gets it but what they end up doing is just piling a bunch of stuff into their story that just, you know, bores the audience to death. The key to good storytelling is figuring out how you can subtract everything you possibly can and still have the story come across. And uh, the audience that way, they, uh, they evoke, it evokes, the story evokes something in the audience that they bring to it. And if you do a good enough job, you fooled them into thinking that what's in their imagination was your doing, when really a lot of it was theirs. But they'll credit it for you. Uh, but this is just the the quintessential example of this. This is a very minimalistic image, but there's so much going on here in their expression, their body language, so to speak. Even those eyes, which are just kind of circles, um, still so much to be said behind those. So beautiful. Uh, we have the uh, Dark Carnival, Cougar and Dark's uh, Carnival from Something Wicked This Way Comes. Um, again, it's kind of just smudged but evocative image. You know, I feel like in this little sketch I could walk right up to it. And then here we have the Foghorn, the story of a prehistoric creature that hears the foghorn in the night. And the uh, the, the lighthouse keepers uh, watch as this thing cries out to the foghorn and then, uh, well I won't spoil it, but uh, it's a great story. It's a short story. You should be checking out Bradbury's stories. They are beautiful and wonderful. And uh, that's it. So, these wonderful hand-drawn illustrations by Val Merrick for Ray Bradbury Live Forever, starring Bill Overs Jr., also written by Bill Overs Jr., although he'll tell you he just took Ray's words and put them into a play, but Bill put a lot of thought behind this play. It's really wonderfully done. You could absolutely take a bunch of Bradbury's words and easily botch it, but Bill did a brilliant job. Um, Val's illustrations really made me good, look good as the visual effects artist, and then again, of blood of Dust and Blood. Uh, find a copy if you can. It's just gorgeous. I hope the pages I showed you didn't spoil anything. I don't think they did, uh, but were enough to make you want to get the book. I'm really looking forward to pouring over this. So that's it. Uh, I will be back with more. We're going to be doing a lot more. 
Uh, I'm going to be doing some videos about writing, about making film make about making films uh, with next to nothing in a post coronavirus um, economy. It can be done. Money can be made, and uh, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to show you how I do it, so you can hopefully do it too. Um, I am very blessed to be working with people like Val Merrick and Bill Oberst Jr. and Chris Young and um, uh, Clint Carney and uh, these are just some of the people that I'm naming that I've worked over the last year with. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's, uh, these are very talented people and I want to continue working with them. I think we can create some amazing things that you're going to be very excited about. I know I'm excited about. So thanks for watching and of course don't forget to uh, like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get updates uh, when my videos come in, and uh, check out my Patreon. My Patreon, uh, if we can get my Patreon up to a certain amount, I'll be able to uh, much more regularly provide you with content, especially if you're an artist yourself, a filmmaking filmmaker who is interested in telling stories um, and making them good stories that you're happy with, that an audience uh, and this is very important, an audience will like and want to see. So uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll be back with more videos soon.